Hi there and welcome back to this week's video. Um, as you'll know if you've been following my channel for a little while, over the last few weeks we've been looking at different aspects of the Battle Royale game mode. It didn't really start off as a Battle Royale tutorial and it still really isn't, but I do think there's quite a lot to learn about um, the different tools and aspects of the Portal Rules Editor using the Battle Royale game mode as a base. There's quite a few people working on Battle Royale modes as we speak, so those game modes are really already in existence um, in a couple of places. But what will be really good to see is people taking the knowledge that you'll learn throughout this course of videos and using them to create your own unique experience. So over the course of the next few videos, we're going to take a look at a more complex aspect of the game. Uh, and that will be creating the ring that you often see as the objective in a battle royale mode. Now why is this beneficial? Well in previous videos we have looked at setting out a square across the map and some of you have already asked whether those can be used to set objectives. Um, well yes we can use those coordinates, those square coordinates to set out a square objective. Um, but on this occasion we're going to look at how we can set out coordinates to set a circular objective. Now again somebody asked whether they could use the square coordinates to set up a game like Domination. Well yeah of course you can. If you understand how those coordinates are created and how you can decide whether somebody is inside or outside of that square um, then you have the basis for any kind of objective mode as long as people know where that objective is and we can use AI players to mark out those objectives if we want to. But we can also create circular objectives rather than just squares. It just requires a little bit of additional mass and some additional thinking. So if I was to try and put all of this into one video, it would come out as being an extraordinarily long video. I do like to explain every step that I do. I could just give you the code, um, but that really wouldn't be helpful or in line with what I'm trying to do on my channel. So I'm gonna split this part of the guide up into several different smaller videos, with the first part of this video being the maths behind um, the ring. We'll then move on to looking at how you can get all of those coordinates ready to place the AI soldiers correctly on the ground using the maths that we've just learnt. And then we will look at how to set the coordinates for those AI players and actually get them in the ring to finish. We will then look at, uh, extend this a little bit further and um, add the logic to check whether the player is in and out of the ring and if there continues to be demand to push this uh, tutorial guide a little bit further I'm quite happy to continue to look at moving the ring from place to place and uh, some other cool things that we can do with the ring once um, we have got all the basics in place. Um, if you do learn how to do this, um, you can of course use this to do all kinds of crazy things. This is a little bit more of an advanced video because there is a little bit of maths involved to get this to work the way that we want it to do, um, but hopefully you'll enjoy it and learn something as we go along. As always, if you enjoy this video, if you get something out of it, I am so close to 500 uh, followers, I can't believe it. Thank you to everybody that's subscribed so far. I will keep putting these out. I'm sorry this uh, video has been slightly delayed. There's been a bit of a gap between this one and my last one. If you like this video, please, please do um, click subscribe if you haven't done already. Um, I am looking to get 500 subscribers before Christmas. And you never know, a thousand will be my next target. Uh, if you really like it, click the like button. And obviously, sharing it with your friends would be extremely awesome. So without further ado, let's move on to create this battle royale ring. Now today we're just going to start off with a tiny little bit of maths. Now I'm not a maths teacher and I know that that's not the reason why you watch my channel we're really just interested in the code but we do need just a tiny little bit of understanding of how we are going to get certain coordinates if we want to plot all of our ai soldiers to make a little ring around our central point uh, then it is very helpful to understand just a tiny little bit of maths in order to make that work. Now, if you're not interested in the maths side of it, uh, then feel free to skip ahead. And I'm not going to go into any great detail about the, how this works. As I say, I'm not a maths teacher. Um, this is not what I do. However, having a tiny little bit of an understanding of how you can plot points is very beneficial. So we're going to use this um, example on the screen and you can see that we have a circle and then there is a grey line reaching out from the centre of this circle to the outer ring. Now if you know anything about circles we can say that that grey line represents the radius of the circle. So the radius is the distance of the outer part of the circle 
to the inner part so we can say now in this ring here as another example on the screen that radius is one and you can also see that there is a right-handed triangle uh, being formed as I go around and it is this property um, of the ring that we are going to use to be able to figure out what the coordinates are on the outside. Now you should be able to see if I just hover here that um, just ignoring the grey line for a moment if we could move that blue line upwards and draw it outwards to this point you would see that the green and the blue lines intersect at the edge and they actually do that all the way through so we move down you can see that the blue and the green line both intersect at the edge. You could also, if we just ignore the triangle for a moment, say that we could work out what this coordinate is if we knew what the center point was, how far the blue line was, and how far the green line was, because we could take this line across the middle and say that that was the X line. We could take this line up the middle going upwards and make that the Z line. So as you can see, Let's go there, let's say there. Well, we could say that that was not 0.71x and not 0.695z. That would give us that point on the circle. So how can we use this to figure out the exact coordinate of something if it is larger than one? So in order to do that, we're gonna use two mathematical functions. We're gonna use sine and we're gonna use cosine. And you can see that they are labeled at the top green and blue on this website. And you can also see that they are labeled green and blue on the right-handed triangle in the middle of the circle as well. So what does that really mean? So first of all, we've got the gray line, which is the radius. That gray line always stays the same length. And in a right-handed triangle like this, that is the longest side of the triangle and it is known as the hypotenuse. The green edge that you can see at the green side of the triangle there is known as the opposite side and the blue side at the bottom is known as the adjacent side so we have the opposite side because it's opposite to the angle as you can see and we have the adjacent side because that is next to the angle that is the blue one and we have the hypotenuse which is the longest side which is the gray one pointing up to the outside now, because of the properties of triangles and the way that they are, we can use sine and the angle to work out the ratio of each of those other sides compared to the radius. And uh, because our circle is made um, of a radius of one, that's pretty easy to see. And you can see, if we look at the top, we've got, uh, we've got the angle set at 44 degrees. And if we say sine 44, we get 0 0.695. And you can see that the green side or the opposite side of the angle is now labeled 0 0.695. And then you can see that we've got cosine 44 degrees. So if we put a 44 degree angle in those brackets, we get the value 0 0.719. And that is what has been labeled on the adjacent side. Now, what that is showing us is the ratio of those sides to the radius or to the hypotenuse. So what we can ascertain from that as we stand at the moment is that if the radius is 1, that the green side is 0 0.695 in length and the blue side is 0 0.719 in length. It's actually giving us a percentage if you think about it this way. So if the radius is one or 100%, um, then the green side, the opposite side is 69.5% of that. And the blue side or the adjacent side is 71.9% of that. So now we're on the final part of this and how we can use this to work out the coordinates on the edge of the circle. You might have already got there yourself just by knowing this already. However, let's imagine that the radius is not one, um, but it is 300. So the radius is now 300 and not one. How do we know what the length of the opposite side is and how do we know what the length of the adjacent side is? Well, we can just use the same arithmetic or the same maths functions. We know that the length of the opposite side is whatever the radius is multiplied by 
the sine of the current angle that we are at. So in this case, again, the angle is set at 44 degrees. Let's just move it a little bit just for interest. All right, so that's nearly 50%. So we know that if we take an angle of 31 degrees and a radius of 300, um, if we multiply 300 by the sine 31, we will get 51.5% of 300. And then if we look at the adjacent side, if we multiply the radius again, which is 300, by the cosine of the angle, which is 31%, we will get 85.7% of 300. Um, now then, why is this important? Well, if we know the length of the blue line, so the adjacent side, we have our x value on the ring at this point. And if we know the value or the length of the green side, the opposite side, then we now have our z value on the ring. So using those calculations, we can work out any point on the ring and where that is, what those coordinates are compared to the central point. And if we start off with a central point of zero, that makes it nice and easy. And in actual fact, if we start off with a point that is not zero, all we have to do is add that on to our calculation. And it's at that point I'm going to stop explaining the maths behind it. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction. If you didn't know that and you didn't understand how sine and cosine works and how we can use that to get the plot points on a circle, well, hopefully you do now. Um, many have probably skipped this part of the video anyway. Um, but if you haven't, do let me know. Did I do a good job explaining that? Was it awful? Um, yeah, please let me know in the comments. But uh, next we're going to move on to the code and get into actually creating this ring. And that brings us to the end of the first part of this multi-part guide on creating the Battle Royale ring, um, where we've covered all of the maths behind setting the coordinates around the edge of a ring based on the radius, as you know if you've just watched it. Um, in the next couple of videos, which I'm going to release pretty much straight away, we will look in the next one at getting the coordinates calculated in the rules editor, uh, and getting prepared to place the AI players on the ground and then we will look at actually creating the ring and placing the AI players on the ground in the final part of this three-part guide. Um, after that I will just be taking a little break while I put together the final couple of videos looking at making sure that the players are inside the circle or outside the circle uh, given some time and we can also play around with that a little bit more uh, but that video is to come. If you have liked watching this, if you've got something from it, um, please do click the subscribe button if you haven't done already and a click on the thumbs up button would be wonderful as well. If you want to hear when the next tutorial or guide is out, if you want to make sure that you're aware, don't forget to click the follow button and you'll get notified when that next video is out. Um, if you've got any suggestions, if you've got anything that you want me to cover, um, I have got a little bit of a backlog at the moment, but I will be covering more as we head into the new year. Uh, so please do subscribe and you'll get notified as soon as those tutorials come out. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.